Hello, Capslow Migrant and Seasonal Head Start programs. My name is Joseph Castro. I am the Parent Family Community Engagement Coordinator. Today, I will be reviewing the Child Abuse and Neglect Mandated Reporter Procedure. As a Capslow employee, you are a mandated reporter. If you suspect or know that a child is being abused physically and or emotionally, or is being neglected, you must complete the Child Abuse and Neglect Mandated Reporter Checklist. Failure to report may result in disciplinary action. For the Family Child Care Program option, it is the responsibility of the provider to complete the SCAR and the UIR. The Family Child Care Coordinator will support the provider with this process. Child Abuse and Neglect Reporting Procedure Checklist. Please complete the Child Abuse and Neglect Report Procedure Checklist to fulfill your responsibilities. A copy of this checklist must be included with all suspected child abuse reports. If you need support or guidance in following this procedure, please contact your supervisor or area manager. Complete the Suspected Child Abuse Report, or SCAR form. Obtain the child's file and any information pertaining to the incident to complete the SCAR. Call the local Child Welfare Services Agency immediately. If you feel that the child is in impending danger, call 911 before contacting CWS. If you feel that the child is not in impending danger, complete the SCAR report using the child's file and any pertinent information for the incident. Immediately send copies of the SCAR to the Family Community Partnership Coordinator and the Area Manager. A copy of the CWS report must be sent to Child Welfare Services within 36 hours. The second form you will complete is the Unusual Incident Report form. This is a California State Licensing form. Complete the unusual incident report form. If the incident occurs while children are in our care, the mandated reporter must contact Community Care State Licensing within 24 hours. Immediately send copies of the UIR to the Family Community Partnership Coordinator and the Area Manager. The UIR must be faxed or mailed within 36 hours to Community Care Licensing. The third form you will complete is the internal referral form. Complete the internal referral form. This is part of the case review process. The internal referral form must be emailed to the Family Community Partnership Coordinator, Area Manager, and Mental Health Program Manager. If the abuse or neglect incident involves a Capslow employee, the mandated reporter must immediately send copies of the internal referral to the area manager and the director, who will then take responsibility for the situation. Documentation and follow-up. Document SCAR action by reading C area manager in the child's file on the reference record. It is the responsibility of the family child care coordinator to support the provider in this process. Guidance for follow-up to suspected child abuse reports. Follow-up to suspected child abuse reports is vitally important to ensure complete and appropriate services are delivered to the child and family. It is the responsibility of the mandated reporter to follow up on any reports that you've submitted, whether the child has transitioned to another program option, has moved on to kindergarten, or has exited the program altogether. Follow-up to the SCAR should be documented in case review notes. For example, if the child involved in the incident exhibits behavioral or emotional distress, or if the family gets connected to support services through CWS. You should receive a letter of disposition from the CWS caseworker within 30 days. If you do not receive this letter of disposition, it is your responsibility to contact the caseworker and ask for follow-up. Whether the follow-up is written or verbal, 
you must document in case review notes the outcome. Please send a copy of the letter of disposition and or the verbal follow-up to the Family Community Partnership Coordinator. Once the Family Community Partnership Coordinator receives the letter of disposition and or verbal follow-up, further guidance will be provided as to whether to keep the internal referral open or closed. The letter of disposition and or documentation of verbal follow-up should be filed with the CWS report. The FCC coordinator is responsible to support the provider with this process. Organization of CWS documents. All of these documents and information should be placed in an envelope, including the child abuse and neglect report procedure checklist, the suspected child abuse report form, the unusual incident report form, and the internal referral form, as well as case review notes pertaining to the situation and the letter of disposition or any correspondence from CWS. Please label the front of the envelope with the child's first and last name, as well as confidential. There should be one scar and corresponding documents per envelope. The CWS documents and envelope will be stored in a locked file cabinet box in the office separate from any other documents. Closing of CWS documentation. When the CWS case is closed, ensure that all necessary paperwork is in the envelope. Seal the envelope and sign your first and last name on the envelope. At the end of the program year, all open CWS cases should remain at the center or FCC program option until follow-up or closure has taken place. All closed CWS cases and their corresponding documentation should be sent to the Family Community Partnership Coordinator. This concludes the review of the Child Abuse and Neglect Mandated Reporting Procedure. Please remember that as a mandated reporter, you play a crucial role in protecting children from abuse and neglect. Thank you for your time.